Hi, Michael. Welcome again. Thank you for being here with me for making the time and the space in your day. I know your days are starting, so it means a lot to me. I wanted to sit down with you for some minutes to talk about what I was telling you earlier. We have this Wise Factor chat and we think that you're a great member. You're a longstanding member, also created a huge friendship with one of our mentors, Tim. So it's great to have you here today. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go through some questions and just find out what gives you the Wise Factor. Sure. So yeah, happy to do that. I wanted to start from the beginning. When did Hanrahan start? When did you start the business? How did it start? Yeah, so our business started probably about 30 years ago. So originally it's one of the big international accounting firms. And then I went to a partner partnership mm. for 10 years. And then I've been in my own practice at Hanrahan's for yeah, about 30 years, I think. Yeah, a long time. A long time, man. Yeah, that's older than me, even, <laughs> and what I've been around. So with Hanrahan started 30 years ago, mm. what was the first insight? How was the start? Did it start very organically? Did you have challenges at first? Like, what can you highlight as your experience while starting out an accounting business? Yeah, so I took my clients from my previous partnership into Hanrahan. So we had clients to start with. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, yeah, then we grew organically. We've never had to buy fees. Um, yeah, progressively over that time, we've employed more and more people and taken on new clients and um, yeah, just evolved uh, like a lot of other accounting practices do, sort of in a, in a normal fashion. But as we grew, it got harder to manage and um, it, it became, you know, challenging to actually do the work, do it effectively and um, have a have a normal life. So, yeah, that's why we try to look for better ways of managing the business. And that's uh, when I came across WISE. Yeah. How did you come across WISE in this while you were facing? I think here, yeah, well, it was probably marketing. I think your marketing with our emails offering, uh, I think it was Ed Chan offering, you know, little tips and things. And then there was links to that, you know. So, yeah, so fundamentally off your marketing program, I suspect. And, yeah. Yeah, so awesome. I love that we got to you by that. Maybe that's the Ed Friday tips. It's one of our, our greatest newsletters, which we love, and uh, many tips yeah. we had. So that yeah. could have been the one. And which specific challenge were you facing when you start? You you were saying uh, growth, but was there any challenge in particular that came with growing that you, when you entered Y, said, oh, this is it? This is what I mean. Mm. Yeah, well, we nearly all accounting practices, the smaller ones, have a flatline management model. And that, as you grow, it just becomes impossible to really cope with it because it requires you to work more hours, you know. So it's a fundamentally flawed system if you grow. If, you, if you're good and you're successful, all it does is it makes it harder for you to run a business, you know, so you get trapped inside this cycle of, you're working longer and harder and, and um, it creates more pressure. So um, so then, yeah, we decided to, yeah, we got to, there's got to be a better way to do it. And then when you look at the wise model, it's the opposite to that. So it's not flat line, you know, it's deep and narrow and, and there's much more control and management and structure to how you run the business. So you're running it more like a business rather than an accounting practice, you know, big difference. So that's the key takeaway for me. Mm, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Actually, the deep and narrow structure is one of the biggest discovery for many of our members. Mm. But there are also others like leadership, culture related. I wanted to ask you because many members went through this, that they had to do some mindset shifts as they went through the divisions, they learned more leadership, more culture. Do you feel like you were like every wise leadership lesson or anything related to culture resonated with you or you had to change your mindset a little bit when it came to? I probably didn't have to change that much because I'm not adverse to change. My mindset is easily adapted to change. Probably 
it's more your, your staff, your employees that, you know, have to struggle with that change. So there's a mind shift. That's right. I think definitely in the way it's run. So, you know, some people adopt that easily without any pushback and there's others that push back completely and can't get their head around or don't like the change, you know, don't like the fact there's change. So that was an issue with us. You know, we had a number of people that weren't all that keen about the change. But you know, I think probably everyone's on board now. You know, it probably took a while, maybe 18 months, for everyone to sort of really see the benefits of it. So, and that's starting to, to happen now. So everyone, I think they believe in the concept. They understand the concept and they believe in the concept and they're not working, pushing against it. But it wasn't an issue for me to adopt that now. Yeah, which is great. It's something that you have in your personality that says you're mm. not resistant to change. Mm. Many people do struggle with this or with yeah. letting go of control to have deeper narrow teams, to have yeah. more people on board, younger people on board or new people to the business. That's kind of hard. So many people, as I was telling you, struggle with this, but I'm glad this was smooth on your behalf. And then the rest of the team got adapted to it which is mainly what the leadership lessons, the culture want to teach you. Mm -hmm. So I also wanted to ask you, Michael, you've been working for a couple of years now through the wise learnings and everything, taking everything in. So ever since you started from now, I'm guessing that you've changed some things in the business that you know now, what would you say to the Michael who was stuck in the business, not working with the deep and narrow team structure? What would be a piece of advice that you would give to anyone who's a Michael at this moment? I think I would say to them, make sure you understand how operationally the change would work. So you need A, to understand and then accept and then you've got to work very hard on actually implementing it because even though the concept may be sound, it's, it doesn't mean that it will work by itself. You've got to work pretty hard to actually implement it. And I think there's some key parts to it that on reflection we would have done earlier. So I think getting a production manager early on in the process is really important. Like that's a key stakeholder in the in the deep and narrow system so you, you need to make sure you've got them in place in your in your teams and if you don't you know all you do is you you sort of have a, a flat line management and a deep team management you know at the same time you know and it doesn't work as it's meant to because the managers the client managers are still doing a lot of the, the grunt work you know and, um, so that's probably what we do differently if we started again or started for the first time when we do that Get, get the production manager and focus on that person, you know, actually running the production effectively and freeing up the capacity of the people above them. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. And this reminds me of something that Ed uses to say, which is get the right people on the right seat on the right bus. Otherwise, Correct. you will be just driving nowhere and people will be doing anything that won't be efficient and effective so mm. that's one of the most important lessons so now that you were saying this that you were into optimizing processes I'm guessing mm. that you've ever since you started you are less busy or focusing more on growth than when you started the wife program right Correct. Yeah. So I've got more capacity, more brain time. And um, so, yeah, I can focus on structures and systems and marketing probably is wow. probably one of my key areas, you know, so it allows me more time to do that. That's Spend great. more time with my kids and grandkids and all that sort of stuff, all the fun things. Yeah. Love so, that. I yeah. wanted to ask you based on that. So now you have more time and we talk about this per phrase a lot that is build a business that runs without you. Does right. this phrase scare you, excite you? This is the reason why you're still working out through the WISE program. Is this somewhere you want to get? Yeah, I'm not scared about it. I've probably tried to run that way in the past, you know, even though I was running a flatline management system, I didn't have the processes in place to do it effectively, you know, and um, so I didn't have the how. I had the why. I, I understood why you do it. I just didn't have the how. So yeah. So the 
the whys gives you the how, for sure. That's what we're implementing. But it does it doesn't happen overnight, even though you get it, you understand it, you implement it. That, that's still hard work to actually have it fully functional. So, you know, we're working hard on getting that done. So that's our proper, our focus at the moment to, to make sure that every day we're improving the, the systems and the functions of, of those systems. Yeah, it's great that you mentioned that part, that it won't work if you don't work on implementation. It's not a thing that happens all by itself. It's not a, just moving a wand around and just saying this, I want yeah, this. You have to work for it. And I'm saying that it's great that you mentioned that because many people are scared to have a business that runs without mm -hmm. them, mainly mm -hmm. because they don't know how that would work or that sounds a little whimsical for them, but it's real when you work for it. So it's rather a lifestyle? Yeah, well, I'm the average accountant is adverse to letting go and, you know, not being in control. So that's, you know, how we're trained, a bit like engineers, you know, you sort of, you want to, you know, be on top of everything. So you have to do everything. And, but you can't, if you're trying to have a normal life, you know, you can't do both. So I can imagine some accountants would struggle with the concept for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I think they're smart enough and, you know, well-trained enough. I think once they get it and if it's implemented, it certainly makes your life, business life easier or yeah. better. I don't know it's easy, it's better, yeah. The fact that you got it, you understood it very early on, mm. that makes you a wise factor member because if you came in without resisting to change, without knowing that there were things to work on, that will make the process a lot easier. Um, yeah, probably we we're a little bit delayed in getting becoming fully functional with it because I tried to do it myself. But, you know, you go through the all the support systems and software, the vault, and look at all those there. I mean, there's so much there. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit hard to get your head around the volume. And I think most accountants will say, oh, okay, I'll go through all of them. You know, there's, I don't know, 40, 50 or whatever there is in there now. There'd be probably more. On hindsight, you're better off getting an understanding and then getting a mentor. You know, I know I cannot pay a trip to, just to market your your system, but your, your mentor is how to implement it more effectively and quickly. And it costs money, so no one likes to spend money, but, you know, yeah. I think it actually saves you time. So it really does save you money in, in the medium to long term. Yeah, I couldn't so agree. So that's what I do differently. You know, I'll probably do a mentor uh, take up earlier. And I'm not getting paid for this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> nice that you pointed out, but this is a genuine comment from you, which I appreciate a lot. Michael, I have one last question for you. And you mentioned earlier that you have great grandkids and grandkids. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing this is part of it, but I always ask the Wise Factor chat people I talk to, what's one hobby or activity that they would enjoy doing more or that they enjoy doing? that they look up to once they are free, once they have more free time, that they would tend to this. Yeah. Well, I probably continue to do what I do. I, I think you've got to have a good work-life balance. So I, I've always tried to do that. So I go on, um, you know, adventure trips, exercise trips around the world, you know, and go to Tour de France, sort of bike riding wow. um, sessions and New York marathons and, you know, various events around the world. I'm going to go to Japan next year and do a ride through Japan. So, yeah, probably just continue to do that, but do it knowing that the business is running even better, you know, while you're away having a good time and enjoying yourself. So I'll con it'll allow me to continue with that life work balance, I think. And, yeah, family and, you know, sort of for you, uh, you don't work to live, you, you work to live, not to live to work, you know. So um, I think it just allows you to do that sort of, you know, in a balanced fashion. Enjoy sure. life. I love that. Yeah. You work to live, not live to work, you know. So and I, if you're running a flatline management system, you're living to work. You know? So, yeah, so uh, kind of flip that, that around. Your wise quote of the day. <laughs> okay. it's, going be, it's going to be an amazing Friday. Um, hey, good on you. Those were all my questions for you today, Michael. I am so thankful um, for you taking the time to answer them, to sit down here and share everything with me. Mm. I really wish you a great tour through Japan next year. 
Okay. And a great Friday. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Lovely meeting you. You're doing a great job, Claudia. So, so well done. Thank you.